Hi, this is the fourth in a series about brushes in Photoshop. If you missed the earlier movies, there's a link to the last one in the description for this one. This time we're going to be looking at texture in brushes. I'm using Photoshop CS4 because brushes changed in CS5. We'll explore that after we finish these, although I have to tell you, this part didn't change at all. So let's open the brushes panel by clicking on the icon here. If you don't happen to have it there, you can go to Window, Brushes, or you can tap F5 on your keyboard, and that will do the same thing. So I'm using a regular round brush because it'll make it easier to see what we're doing. To go to the textures, just click on the word texture and that enables them and also opens the texture options. The first thing that you'll see here is the pattern swatch up at the top left. If you want to choose a different pattern, you can just click on the menu button there and you can choose any patterns that you happen to have loaded currently in Photoshop. This is just the patterns one that ships with Photoshop and down here at the bottom, I've also opened the artistic surfaces because I like some of those for this sort of thing. So let's pick that pattern. Now, the way the patterns work is to take the value of each pixel in the pattern. The higher the value, that is the lighter the pixel, the higher it's considered to be on the paper and the more likely it'll get paint on it. The lower the value, that is the darker the pixel, the lower it is and the more likely it is to be missed while painting. It's just like rubbing a crayon over a bumpy surface. The tops of the bumps get color and the bottoms don't. So as you can imagine, grayscale patterns make it easier to see what's going on and the higher the contrast, the more distinct the pattern will be. You can use colored patterns because colored pixels have values too, but you might have results that aren't what you expect. So let's see how this works. I'm going to just paint a swatch over here. And as you can see, the lighter the pixel in the pattern, the more paint it has on it, and the darker the pixel, the less paint it got. So because I'm using a dark paint on a light ground, that seems to be the inverse of what I have over here for the pattern. I can invert it by just clicking the invert checkbox. And now I have the inverse. So the darker the pixel, the more paint it got, and the lighter the pixel, the less paint it got. It basically just inverted it. And that's the way that works. So I'm going to undo those brush strokes using Command Z and Option Command Z to step backwards through history. That's Control Z and Alt Control Z on a PC, of course. So this little icon here lets you make presets, but we're not going to be doing presets yet. So I'm just going to skip that for now. The next slider down here is the scale. And of course you can have a tiny little scale or you can use a large scale. You can go between one and a thousand percent. And of course, as always, it's sort of geometric. So if you move it a lot here, you get a little bit of change. And if you move it a little bit up at the top end, you get a lot of change. So you can also just type in the value you want, select that. And I think I'm going to type in 120% and we'll leave it at that for now. Now the next thing says texture each tip, and that's a checkbox. And let's take a look at how that works. I'm going to undo those two strokes. Right now, the way that Photoshop interprets the texture is to use the same texture for the entire stroke. So it doesn't matter how many times I go back over the stroke, the texture doesn't get any darker. If I wanted to get darker, I have to lift the pen and then go back again, and now the stroke will get darker. It'll build up as I continue to use more and more strokes. When you have texture each tip enabled, then instead of using the entire texture for the stroke, each tip gets its own texture and it builds up very quickly. I can show you that more easily if we go to brush tip shape and I increase the spacing here. As you can see where the brush dabs overlap, you'll get darker places between them. If I go back to texture and I disable texture each tip, then you don't have any difference. The dabs just describe the texture as they go along. So I'm going to go back to brush tip shape. We worked with all of this stuff in an earlier movie. If you're not familiar with it, you can go back to that movie and take a look. And I'm going to reduce the spacing so I get more or less a single stroke here. Now the other thing that happens when you use texture each tip is that the two depth sliders at the bottom become enabled. That's minimum depth and depth jitter. And in order to describe what's going on there, we really have to talk about depth first. So depth determines how deep the valleys in the texture are. The deeper they are, the less paint gets into them. So if I use a really contrasty texture and no, not that one, let's go down here to this coarse weave. Then you'll see that at 80%, 85% depth, which is what we've been using, you get a little bit of paint in the valleys, but you don't get a whole lot. If I change this to 100, then I don't get any paint in the valleys at all. And if I reduce it, the more I reduce it, the more paint you get in the valleys until you go all the way down to zero when you basically lose your texture because the valleys get as much paint as the tops of the, the bumps do. So that's the way that works. 
If you have texture each tip enabled, then you can not only have the texture applied to each tip, but you can also have a different depth applied to each tip. So let's change the depth back to 100. The minimum depth, as you might expect, determines what the minimum depth is for each tip. So um, I'm going to turn on a depth jitter because without jitter, of course, it's all going to be the same. And as you can see now, some of the tips have a very, very low depth and some of them have a higher depth. I'm going to turn this back up to like 50 something. And you can see that now my stroke builds up within the stroke and I have a nice amount of texture showing all the time. And I can control that more easily if I want to by using the control that is down here at the bottom. Right now it's set to off, which means that only the jitter is being used. It's not being controlled at all. I can change that to fade. And as long as I still have the depth jitter on, it's going to jitter as well. So let's turn the jitter off completely. And now it will change between 100%, which is the maximum depth, and the minimum depth, which is 55 in however many steps I have here. So that's 25 steps between 100 and 55. And once it's done those 25 steps, it will just stay at 55 for the rest of the stroke. So I'm going to undo that. You can also use pen pressure to control it. Now, this works a little bit differently than you might expect. The lighter your pressure, the lower your depth. The more pressure you use, the higher your depth. So if you want to use a lot of texture, you have to press very hard with your stylus. That is about the opposite of what you would get if you were using your crayon on your paper, but that's the way that Photoshop works. So I'm going to undo that one, and we will go to pen tilt. Once again, the more perpendicular your pen, the more texture you will see, and the more horizontal your pen, the less texture you will see. With the stylus wheel, the depth increases as you roll the wheel back. So when it's forward, like it is now, I don't have much texture, and as I roll it back, the texture increases. So that's the way that one works. Rotation changes as you rotate, and once again, you'll just have to play with that and get used to it. And that's that for all of that. So let's turn the texture each tip off. Finally, let's go back to blend mode for a moment. These are like the blend modes in the rest of Photoshop, but they determine how the paint interacts with the pattern, not with the paper or with any underlying layers or any other paint that you already have on this layer. So multiply is pretty much what we've been doing up till now. It just gets you that. Subtract has the effect of inverting the texture. So this is subtract with invert on. And if I disable invert, as you can see, what I have here is pretty much what I got over here with just multiply. And um, I'm going to undo those strokes. You can just play with this. And as you can see, you'll get different effects. And you can tell what you're going to get if you look down here at the stroke preview in the bottom. Now, some of them, you will notice, appear to be just solid with no texture at all. And that's because they're meant to work with other dynamics. So if you enable other dynamics, and as you can see, all we're doing here is using the pen pressure to control the opacity, then suddenly these modes work as well. I'm going to undo these two strokes. And now the more pressure I use, the less texture I have, which is what you would expect from the crayon and the paper. And um, you'll probably be more comfortable working this way. So all of these work this way. And um, you might ask, well, this is really cool. If I were to turn other dynamics off and instead use the opacity slider up here at the top, would I get the texture? And the answer is no. All you do is decrease the opacity of the brush stroke. It doesn't change the texture. You won't see it at all. In order to see the texture, you absolutely must have other dynamics enabled. So with other dynamics enabled, you can go ahead and use these things really easily. And you can just play with these and see what you get. Um, they do differ and they're lots of fun to use. So the other thing that's fun to do is if you have a lot of texture, and let's just build something up real quick here. If I change the color, I could go to a cyan and then use the same thing. While I'm using hard mix here, you'll notice that I'm getting a, a rim that stays around the color and you can get some really interesting effects. And, um, have a lot of fun using textures and building them up and just sort of playing with them. And we are out of time. So until next time, this has been Robin Wood, and I hope that you found this helpful.